Well, hi, good morning. It's Tom. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Connecticut, and um, I just spent some time listening, watching um, several videos, one of which was um, Renetto's video about um, how Lonely Girl 15 gives the people what they want, and uh, uh, that was really an interesting video, and I wanted to uh, uh, say a few words about it, and because it, I, I think... Uh, uh, Renato's hitting on some uh, really important ideas and you know the whole response to the revelation that Lonely Girl 15 uh, is really a professional um, which many people think makes her a fake um, is you know an interesting point in the development of YouTube and what YouTube is about so I wanted to add my two cents to that conversation. Um, one of the things that, that uh, uh, Paul said in his video is that you can't be real about your full intent on YouTube because uh, people there are people who don't want you to be real. There are people who want um, uh, YouTube to remain a purely amateur kind of um, reality. Sorry, uh, reality. Uh, interjected in the form of a phone call there. I, I was saying that there are people who um, really want YouTube to remain um, a purely amateur uh, environment. I mean, where where no one has any, um, let's call them ulterior motives, that everybody's motives here are pure. And by pure, I think what what these folks mean is that, you know, free from commercial intent. That nobody has any thoughts of making a dime on uh, using YouTube as the vehicle to, to make money. And um, that if you do, then you're betraying the spirit of the community. And I, I think we all understand that, um, that kind of thinking because we all, um, well, take a, look at the, take a look at the kind of response that, that came about when the lonely girl uh, situation was revealed there were people who felt betrayed now <clears throat> excuse me why why do people respond that way when they think that people were trying to make money from something well I think because we believe that money corrupts we have a we have a belief somewhere collectively in our cultural belief system uh, that says that if you're doing something for money then the then your motives uh because they're financial um uh, anything else that you um uh say about your motives has to be uh disbelieved that that you can only because money is involved that it becomes the predominant uh screen through which the lens through which anything is viewed any kind of any kind of creative endeavor that you'd be involved in, because you were doing it for money, it would have um, uh, less of a an authentic aspect to it. Well, that's you know I think that's a a really important thing for us to know about ourselves. First of all, and second of all, I think it's it's one of those um, uh, lines that we draw that is probably not as clear as we draw it. What do I mean? Well, look, um, I don't know about you, but I'm never sure what all my motives are about anything that I do. I, 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 I can identify the motives that I think are the motives for what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean that I, that I understand all the motives for what I'm doing. Take, um, uh, what's this fellow's name? Perry Urban, uh, the guy that Renetto um, chose for his Make You Famous Overnight or whatever whatever that contest was called. Uh, well, um, uh, uh, how many of us are here to be famous? Well, uh, we all probably want to get more viewers and more subscribers. We all want people to hear our message and, and our uh, uh, think that what we're saying is smart or clever or that we're cute or that we're really creative or that our songs are great or that our cat is terrific or, you know, uh, you know, in such Steve's case that our day was as boring as we portray it to be. I mean, we all want some something 
from look what we're doing we're making videos and we're putting them out to one another so the idea that somehow we all are understanding what our motives are and that those motives are, are and that in fact are the motives are purely as we state them I mean it's probably not exactly that way we probably all have lots of complex kind of motives for what we're doing here now as long as those motives aren't financial I guess we believe that it's okay that you know you can really want to become famous and that you can really want to have people uh, say great things about what you say and that that's all fine but that if any money is involved ah, now you've crossed the line over to you know the the dirty lucre side of things um, so that's I mean that's an important an important I think for me an important thing to just think about in regard to this the second thing is that Renato said some things about what he was calling uh, Lonely Girl 15's high quality videos and that you know if you want high quality video videos you're probably going to have to recognize that the people doing so Lisa Nova whoever are 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 professionals and that they have camera crews and production people around them and so on um, and that's true uh, if you want videos that look and feel and sound like the kinds of things we're used to looking and seeing and feeling uh, on on mass media television movies and so on then yep those are high quality videos by those standards but if you want if, if you define high quality in other terms take the authenticity of geriatric 1927 for example and and thousands of others who are creating videos not as entertainment but as some kind of chronicle of their own experience as an expression of who they are and whatever well those are high quality videos as well they're just high quality against a different kind of standard than the kind of standard that lonely girl 15 um, was producing and that you know it gets produced in the John Stewart clips the for me the bottom line is that the line between real and fake is what we react to what does that mean for me it means that if I tell you that I'm really me that I'm not Dom DeLuise's long-lost cousin an actor who is here in some kind of professional capacity and then that turns out not to be true then you have engaged in a relationship to me with me based on false pretenses if if I tell you when we go to the movies we sit in the theater and we look at the screen and we do something that you know people have talked about for a long time as suspending disbelief what does that mean I'm sitting in a theater I'm watching light flickering up on a screen I'm not watching people chasing each other in the street I, I don't believe that what's really happening in front of me is th that that isn't you know uh, 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 an illusionist that uh, uh, that I see up there on the screen being played by Edward Norton. It's Edward Norton playing a character which has been filmed and is being has been edited. But I'm suspending all that disbelief voluntarily because I've gone into the theater to do so. But when someone says to to you, "Hey, this is really me. This is what I really am. I'm not making. I'm not seeming to be one thing." and actually being something else dramatically different, then we feel betrayed. So, um, you know, I think there's plenty of room for me. There's, no, forget about it. It doesn't matter what I think. There's plenty of room. There's going to be professionally produced content here on YouTube. People doing things because there's millions of people watching. Where else would you go if you were going to produce that kind of content? And there's going to be other people who are not producing professional content we're just sitting here on our decks on a Saturday morning in Connecticut saying what's on our mind there is going to be both of those and I think it's part of the evolution of this into something um, that it's going to be so um, thanks and uh, I hope it's as beautiful where you are as it is where I am bye